My name is Andrew Ford Lyons. I'm the Global Tech Hub Manager for Internews Europe. Uh, we provide technical support and training uh, for local independent media organizations. We support them through training in digital security, in uh, mentoring in uh, how to use the web better, and we also support them with uh, infrastructure. We try to create a community of people who are actually going to be practitioners of it, so that way that it stays alive and they have some reason to be using it. We train people on a series of tools that are sort of contextually relevant and also relevant to their work processes. Uh, GPG is one of these tools. It's really good uh, as an experience to train somebody in using GPG if they come from a background where they've experienced uh, government surveillance or um, some sort of um, attacks by uh, non-state actors or other, other types of adversaries. Um, these are people who come ready to use the tool because they actually know what it is that they're trying to protect and they have some sort of experience of where the information they're trying to protect has been put at, at risk. One of the interesting things about GPG is that n through the process of learning how it works and through the process of learning it, which uh, can take a little bit more time than some of the other tools, is you develop a, an awareness of privacy and the awareness of the importance of what you're doing. And that has an organizational benefit for the people that we're supporting because then they actually start treating other things more securely. So like you end up with more of a security culture than you might get with some of the other it just works type of apps. We work with a number of partners that are in uh, various extreme situations of dealing with uh, high levels of censorship, uh, high levels of surveillance, um, and oftentimes, or oftentimes, dealing just with uh, low levels of infrastructure. So we're not really working with uh, partners who are in Western countries. We're working with uh, partners in other areas of the world. We use GPG, um, or have done GPG trainings uh, for groups of people who are already um, out of a country and have claimed asylum somewhere else, but themselves might be targeted uh, from adversaries inside the country, or who might be actually still collaborating with independent journalists across borders. And in those situations, being able to use GPG has been quite important in terms of um, sensitive communications, but also just to do even relay quite what may to other people seem like quite normal uh, communications, like um, asking somebody where they're at or asking somebody, um, how can we pay you? Um, and to get some sort of uh, basic information that I think a lot of us take for granted and don't think need some higher level of security. We probably should think that those things need a higher level of security, but when we're working with these people, they've actually absorbed that there is a need for this high level of security and they're ready to use something like GPG to do it. Journalists are uh, one of the groups that are really seizing on the importance of encryption and more and more coming to trainings for GPG. They're looking for uh, an effective suite of tools that will actually help them protect what they're working on, protect the sources that they're working with. And for that, um, in terms of being able to have an email address that any source can contact you and being able to put a GPG fingerprint under your signature is uh, now becoming sort of like a sort of almost a badge of authenticity that says like I take security seriously. There's been a really big uptake uh, for GPG amongst journalists who work locally uh, outside of Western countries. Um, there's been somewhat of an uptake inside Western countries but where I've noticed it quite more is for journalists who generally travel between regions. And I think it's because the security, a security culture has been more dominant amongst this group of journalists because they're actually seeing different degrees of security in, or insecurity in various places. So they sort of have a, a better understanding of uh, what it means to go from a safe, a safer feeling place to a lesser, uh, a place that feels less safe. And um, to be honest, I think it's another thing that people who don't go to those places take for granted because in terms of um, surveillance and in terms of hacking, in terms of um, 
people getting into your email accounts, the, the front line is everywhere. There's, there's no such thing as a border that keeps you away from that. Personally, I think like where GPG comes in really important for me in my role is not always in being a trainer or somebody who's training somebody else how to use GPG, but in using it within my own team when we talk about projects and when we talk about things that we're doing. Because uh, when we use GPG internally, um, we're, doing, we're inherently practicing do no harm with the people that we're, we're talking about and with the people that we're trying to support. So when we use GPG, just even amongst our team, even when we're uh, working with uh, projects where the people will not be using it and uh, have expressed no interest in using it, we're able to still provide a higher degree of protection by knowing that our own conversation about them is not going to uh, become exposed and put them at some greater form of harm. So uh, I consider GPG to be um, infrastructure uh, for any sort of uh, organization's reasonable communication model. So um, even if you're not going to be spreading it out, which I think people should, and I think everybody should actually have some understanding of how it works for, for various reasons, um, I think even internally, using GPG amongst yourselves um, helps you protect not just your own, your own privacy, but it also helps you protect anybody that you're actually talking about or anybody that you're trying to support as well.